On this episode of TFL Truck, we're gonna find out if the all new Land Rover Defender 133 row gigantic Defender can tow by towing over 7,300 pounds. I'm gonna show you how easy or hard it is to hook up to a trailer, what the fuel efficiency is with a trailer, and also how it accelerates with a trailer. So let's go. I'm towing pretty heavy on this episode and I'm using that, the Ford Bronco four-door first edition on our beautiful Aluma car hauling trailer. The total weight of the entire setup will be just about 7,300 pounds, which is gonna challenge that Defender near its maximum. As always, we're using heavy duty Gen Y hitches, height adjustable. Oh my gosh, there's a hurricane on the loose. It's really windy. So here's the thing about the Defender 130. It has a lot in common, of course, with the other Defender models, which is independent suspension all the way around. And this one also has uh, air suspension, which is height adjustable, which is helpful for towing. So right about now, you're probably asking yourself, Andre, what are you doing? You have a Land Rover Defender which is a luxury SUV, which is meant for off-roading. I mean, it has off-road heritage. Why are you towing a giant trailer with it? Well, several reasons. First of all, this is the Defender 130, the largest of Defenders. It's a full size, in my opinion, three row SUV. So when I'm towing with it, I'm thinking about other large SUVs like the Chevy Tahoe, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, the Ford Expedition and others. And it has 8,200 pounds of total towing capacity, which is matches the Tahoe or the Suburban um, on, in many configurations. So this is a four wheel drive, three row, eight person SUV that's capable of towing and that's how I'm gonna test it. I love this feature of the new Defender and a lot of SUVs have similar features. I have this three-dimensional view All the way around it's quite high definition quite precise actually There it's helping me to line up All right, let's go outside and check all right, so now I can Readjust it again. This should automatically lock. There it is. It just did it. The Demco coupler is quite nice. And now I have to deal with one little issue, which is the trailer brake controller. The Defender does not have it built in. I'm using a Prodigy Takansha remote brake controller. It's not hard mounted in this box uh, because I'm actually um, going to be swapping these trailers at rifle truck and trailer hopefully soon with another Aluma trailer um, so I don't want to drill holes in it but I could for example put that box somewhere in here like this little charger uh, here on the side this guy plugs into the box and the wire from the box goes into the truck and also I've noticed I have to really firmly seat this inside here because if it, I don't the connection is not totally good so all right so I think I got it yes I see lights on the trailer let me pull away and start loading so here in the cab I have this uh, remote controller for the Prodigy RF. It's based on a 12 volt system. So basically I just plug it in to any 12 volt socket on my truck and it should say C for connected. And then I have manual brake override right here. I have my boost feature, which kind of adds a little bit more bite to the beginning of the braking and I can control my gain with this little wheel on the side here. So it's a full-featured brake controller. 
and since I'm towing what just over 7,000 pounds it's really necessary As always, TFL runs on Sinclair, so I'm gonna top off before my 22 mile loop. And, okay, oh, do I have to pay? So why do we use Sinclair? Well, a couple of things. DinoCare additive for a little bit better engine performance. I'm gonna be using 91 octane for this one because it's a high performance situation. I'm doing towing and I'm doing a zero to 60. Um, and also you can save money. You can get the DinoPay app, find the nearest location near you and see how much it costs and save about 10 cents off a gallon. All right, 91 octane, which is premium fuel right here in Colorado. As always, I'm using the same refill procedure. Have it click one time and then wait 30 seconds and top off. We always do the same procedure for every vehicle we test. So it's kind of an even procedure every single time so I'm gonna top off and go all right that was 30 seconds nice top off it's time to get on the road the trailer I'm using today is a 24 foot car hauler Aluma trailer it's all aluminum it's really strong really high strength and also lightweight it will never rust and we've had it for about a year and i've loved every trip that i've taken with this trailer um, the bronco weighs at about 5300 pounds this first edition bronco behind me the trailer weighs about 2000 pounds so combined it's about 7300 pounds of total trailer weight the bronco is also pretty tall so it will um, have some wind resistance so I think it's just a good looking trailer that I can tow with my beautiful Defender. This loop is a combination of both city and highway. As I accelerate on the highway, one thing strikes me immediately. It's the smoothness of the ride and stability of this Defender. Uh, this is a concrete highway with a lot of expansion joints built into it. You will find this type of highway throughout Colorado and maybe other states as well. And usually what happens with a truck and a trailer on this particular stretch of highway, it starts getting into an isolation. It starts going up and down, up and down, and small bumps. This is smooth and silk. Look at this. I'm relaxed. I'm going 60 miles an hour. The cabin is nice and quiet, even with the sunroof shade open. And stability is top notch. There is no trailer sway. And this air suspension is handling all imperfections with ease. I can't even believe this. I think this is the best riding towing SUV I've ever tested. Right about now, you're probably wondering, Andre, what's under the hood of this thing? Why haven't I, you told us about the engine yet? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. This engine I love, this is the P400. It's a three liter straight six gasoline turbocharged mild hybrid powertrain from Land Rover that I've loved from the first time I drove it. So let me give you a real world zero to 60 with a giant heavy trailer right here, right now. I'm gonna brake torque it a little and let it go. Go! 396 horsepower or 395 406 pound-feet of torque and I'm using a draggy satellite 0 to 60 performance meter so I'll be able to save each run and I can show you uh, what it's doing with a trailer with no load no trailer or weight 
in the 130, Land Rover says this is capable of about seven and a half seconds, zero to 60. So it's not gonna win a lot of races off the stoplight, but what it is is a very smooth power plant as you probably saw there with an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's smooth as silk, it has auto stop start, and because it's a mild hybrid, it has that electric motor to kind of smooth out different transitions. And it's just, just a kind of a pleasure to drive and it has a lot of torque. So again, I'm gonna brake torque it a little. And by the way, I'm moving about 7,300 pound trailer, which is near the maximum of this SUV. And this type of acceleration is plentiful to let, allow you to merge on a highway with a heavy load behind you and still remain confident in the performance of the SUV. So let me show you the results. Let me show you what I just did. Okay, so this is my draggy 0-60 to 60 result for the first run. As you can tell up here, it tells me about 5,000 feet of elevation above sea level. So of course, some of these times will be slower than at sea level. I did a zero to 60 in 16 seconds flat. So if the stock SUV with no trailer or no load is about seven and a half seconds with almost maximum load, it more, a little bit more than doubles the time. And I've seen this before in other vehicles. My second run was surprising though. Usually my second run is a little bit slower, but not this time. I had a good launch, 15.92 seconds, zero to 60. So according to this data, uh, this SUV is pretty strong, like I told you. All right, I've completed my loop. Now I can show you what the Defender is telling me as far as efficiency and also I will calculate for you what happened at the pump. So let me uh, pull in, get some fuel, do the calculation and we'll find out exactly how, how it behaves with a trailer behind it. So my loop was actually a little bit longer than I anticipated. So approximately 24 miles according to the GPS. And the truck is showing 10.4 MPG, which is double digits, which is a pleasant surprise. Let me see what the pump says. All right, now for the moment of truth, let's get to the uh, fuel efficiency, which is important these days because fuel is expensive still, even though it's coming down a little bit. All right, as always, 30 seconds and I'll top off. Okay, that was kind of a sizable top off. And I'm using the same pump, by the way. So I'm trying to get rid of as many variables as possible. Damage is 2.458 gallons. Let's calculate. So the route was 24 miles divided by 2.458 gallons. And the result is 9.8 if you round to the first decimal place. So it's close to what the computer was saying on the truck. Still very close to 10 MPG, towing what, 7,300 pounds, maybe a little bit more. So, well, you have to decide for yourself, is that good or bad? Compared to other SUVs, that's actually pretty good. Well, as you saw right there, uh, lots of positives and also a couple of negatives with towing in the Defender 130. First of all, the positives. Ride is incredible. Probably the best riding towing SUV I've ever been in. Uh, quite impressive. The powertrain is very smooth. I think it was one of the quicker ones that's not like a super truck or an electric vehicle uh, while towing. That was great. Uh, the mirrors are not that good. They're, I wish the mirrors could extend a little bit more for towing. Also, the negative is there's no trailer brake controller integrated into the system. I wish there was. Hopefully, uh, on the next iteration of this, they will do that. But, um, and it also wasn't tremendously efficient uh, towing this trailer. But, 
Uh, overall, I would put it up against any big SUV for towing. Quite comfortable, really spacious. You can put a lot of people or cargo in here. So overall, I would give it a good grade. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want to see more, go to oldtfl.com because Roman has reviewed this Defender also. Uh, so he shows you all the features, not just the towing features of this truck. Uh, so uh, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.